Okay. Let me know you start recording. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, April 20th, 2023 meeting of the West Sacramento Area Flood Control Agency, WSAFCA. Thank you for all joining us today. Uh, we'll start off, if you could please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Allegiance flag, United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. Um, we'll start our agenda today with um, item 1A, which is presentation uh, by members of the public on matters not on the agenda. Do we have anyone here today which is to speak and or any correspondence? I've not received any. Okay. Thank you. Um, maybe next time. Item 1B, report out on closed session. Thank you, Chair Ramos. The board met in closed session on the two items on the closed session agenda and took no reportable action. Thank you. Item 1C, monthly and year to date Revenue and Expenses Report. Morning, Chair Ramos and members of the board. This report summarizes revenues and expenses for February 2023. Starting with Fund 870, the starting balance was $6.8 million. No revenues were received for the period. On the expense side, there were some minor expenses for uh, lobbyist services totaling $6,000, and the ending position for Fund 870 was $6.8 million, essentially the same. For Fund 871, the Capital Projects Fund, the starting balance was $5 million. No revenues were received for the period, and expenses totaled $345,000. Most of that expense was related to uh, staff support, both general staff report for the agency, um, for the federal project, and um, also geotechnical services for the Sac River West North Levy project. The ending position for 871 in February was $4.7 million. For the period, uh, that brings the agency's total cash position to $11.4 million. And, uh, and the, this month's um, progress report we had, uh, which was totaled last week, the agency's position was $10.7 million. But this week we received a, a true up payment from the state for $1.5 million, plus or minus, for quarters uh, 44, 45, and 46. So that brings the agency's current cash position up to $12 million right now. Um, in the works also, we have a construction retention release that we're working through DWR for $306,000 and also uh, a final real estate payment for $2.8 million for a total of about $3 million in the near term. Once we receive those revenues, we're working with uh, DWR to determine the amount of remaining funding in the construction funding agreement. It's somewhere between nine and $11 million, and we're hoping to get that money advanced to West Safka for work in kind and other um, cost on the federal project. So you'll hear more about that in a month or so. So our current past position right now is about $12 million, and that ends the report for February. Any okay. questions? Thank you. Any questions? Okay. I'm sorry, you said for February, correct? Oh, I'm sorry. You. Did you say February? February, yes. Okay. Yeah, Thank that's the... In the current position right now for the, uh, as of April, is $12 million. So the reports lag about two months to get all the entries in. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, on to our consent uh, agenda, which uh, uh, consists of a, a resolution to receive funds from DWR for the Regional Flood Management Program, and then also approval of our March 16th, 2023 meeting minutes. Is there any questions or comments? Otherwise, I would uh, entertain a uh, motion to uh, move the consent agenda. So moved. I'll second. Then moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 
On to um, item 4A, which is the West Seifka project updates. Thank you, Chair Ramos and board members. I'll just go over a few of the items that are in your packet. Um, with the continuing um, maintenance of, of the Southport restoration project or the rest restoration portion of the project, because the water levels in the river have been consistently high, there's, they just can't get out there to do anything. So it's probably going to be some time uh, into mid to late May, depending on really all dependent upon water levels. Um, and because of the water levels are high too, we, we haven't been able to get out there to see how much <clears throat> accretion there's been, how much silt or sediment has uh, moved from the main stem of the river into the offset area like it has in years past. So um, there's a lot we're looking forward to seeing out there once the water does recede. And we'll make sure to report out to the board, probably with pictures as well. On the federal project, um, as Mark uh, reported, most of uh, the expenses right now are supporting uh, the segment on Sac River West North Levy um, to facilitate the design of that, of that reach. Um, but some of our, our previous designs, uh, specifically Yolo Bypass East Levy South, just south of uh, where I-80 comes into the city. That project went out to bid uh, this month, and uh, all of the bids came in under the engineer's estimate, which is right around $9 million. Uh, I think five out of the six bids, or four out of the five bids, were between four and $5 million. And I think one was around $6 million. Um, all that's to say is that's coming in well below um, both the engineer's estimate as well as the cost update. And I've reported previously that the cost updates Kind of gone through the roof again it's only an estimate um, but this bid came in at about one-fourth of what the new or cost update had for this reach um, so we're hoping that trend continues uh, we're expecting the north reach of yolo bypass east levy to go out to bid uh, in may um, and again construction will depend on the season whether or not we're able to get out there and do work uh, by the time everything gets rolling or we'll have to do that in the in the spring of next year Meanwhile, on the Sac River West North Levy, uh, the Corps plans to officially start the kickoff for design in June. Um, and we're hopeful it'll be a tough race to get to construction uh, on any of those reaches on Sac River West North Levy next year. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of work to go through. There's a lot of encroachments on the levees. Um, but we're going to be the segments one and two, which are the northern most upstream segments <clears throat> above the um, where the, uh, well, they're above I Street anyways. Um, those are the first two up for design, but we're also looking at, uh, based on the survey work in the river for the bathymetry, the in-water survey, we may uh, also break out a separate um, erosion uh, construction project, depending on, on what's out there. So um, we'll keep you posted on how these the design effort uh, progresses and, and how it may uh, sort of splinter into different uh, design packages, um, but more to come later in the year. And then um, I think in the report it says that we were expecting the president's budget to be released in March. It was. Mm -hmm. um, it was for approximately, uh, it was a little bit less than 58 million. I think it was 52.3, something like that. Um, Again, that's the budget request. The appropriations bill this fall is where that money becomes real. Um, but we've heard from the Corps that, and I've reported on this before, uh, the Corps has about $100 million right now. And rather than costs going up, costs are going down, they're going to be hard pressed to spend it all uh, by October 1st, when this money is due to roll in. So they've been asked, the district have been asked, how much money do you really need? Um, and can you do with a little bit less? So um, it's likely that the FY24 appropriations bill uh, may be on the order of 30 million as opposed to 52 million. Uh, from a cash flow perspective, it's not a problem. Um, what is important is that we continue to receive funding. Uh, but Kind of hot on the heels of that, and, and, and it's ironic that because of the cost update, the recent cost update by the Corps, the FY25 budget request that they'll be submitting in September could approach well over $150 million. So 
they're going to have some explaining to do, or, you know, and we're working with them to find a good, <laughs> a good story to tell. You know, what, what's the rationale for why, um, you know, cotton number one, why costs have gone up and, and why we're decreasing funding and then likely going to turn around and then request a, a significantly uh, larger amount. So, um, but that's the, that's the lay of the land. I'll keep you posted um, as we reach these, these milestones and the requests are made. Greg, big, big picture, yeah, or, or long, long term, you know, they, you know, at some point here in the next year or so, we're, we're going to have real numbers on that North, whole North levy thing. Yeah. And then even projects go out and, you know, where the bids come in obviously makes a difference. But, you know, when do we kind of look farther down, you know, what's left to attack as far as our project and, you know, a lot of that stuff that was in the GRR is, you know, going to be subject to, you know, more scrutiny. Um, just just kind of get your view of where we're going. So big picture, Sac River North is probably going to be the, well, it's going to be one of the more expensive reaches in its entirety. It's almost six miles long just because of, of the complications out there, railroads and corporation yards. And this assumes that every stretch, assuming every stretch of that reach needs improvement, there's been a significant change in the um, revised hydrology for the Sacramento River and American River systems with the Folsom JFP being uh, complete with the, op the lower um, spillway. spillway, as well as now they're raising the dam by another three feet. Um, and the way they operate, uh, the flows from that have significantly reduced releases related to a 200-year event. And you couple that with the project that's being widened, I mean, the project that's going up to probably construction later this year or, or next to widen the SAC bypass, take more water off of the SAC River main stem and put it into the bypass. Those two alone, they're looking at the hydrology reflects upwards of a foot and a half reduction in water stage on the Sacramento River for the 200-year event. So areas that previously we maybe didn't quite have in a freeboard, that goes away. Areas where through seepage and or under seepage may have indicated uh, a, a deep slurry wall or, or other seepage remediation was necessary may no longer be necessary. We won't know till the Corps proceeds with their geotechnical basis of design, which they're about ready to undertake. So all that's going to be uh, will indicate you know how much improvement really needs to be done. And so I'm hopeful that it's going to reduce the scope of Sac River North, thereby reducing cost. But it will still be a, a very complicated reach to, to work around these bridges and, and all of that. Um, so, so there's that. Um, the stone lock solution, um, the core wanted to put dirt, according to the GRR, uh, an earthen berm, essentially where the palm, I'm not the palm, the Mike McGowan bridge is. Well, that's not going to work. So we're looking at moving that um, westward to a more narrow section of where the lock structure is um, to shrink the, the footprint, shrink cost, and again, coupled with the lower water surface ele elevations on the Sac River, we're fairly confident that that work will come in well under what's currently estimated. So I think big picture, we're going to see significantly less uh, costs for these reaches and what's currently forecast by the cost estimates. But until we actually get to design and, and where the core does, you know, construction estimates, we, we won't really, we won't have hard numbers. There'll be, you know, educated guesses based on the information that we know. Okay. Um, but to the cost, core's sort of official position on cost, another cost update will be done in approximately two years. We will be taking all of the data that we've gathered from the bids, both on our side of the river and across the river. Whatever design information we have and the work that we're going to continue to do on the real estate, you know, the LURDs, lands, easements, real estate, all of that, we, that the non-federal sponsors required to do for the project, all of that's going to inform um, costs for the next update. We're hoping to significantly reduce uh, what they're currently estimating the total project cost to be. We're hoping to bring that back back into more reasonable amount. That'll happen officially in two years. 
Okay. I don't know if I answered your question. Well, you, no, you, you did. You brought, brought us along. Uh, and, and maybe it's kind of early, early, too early now to know, but, you know, the, the whole idea of improvement to the deep, deep water ship channel levees, you know, and, and what that will eventually become is, is an important part of the, the funding at, at some point. So it'll be interesting. I mean, we got a lot of work going on right now, but, uh, you know, yeah. how that... How that works out and is going to be interesting. I know there's other factors that get involved in there and, uh, you know, save enough money, maybe we'll come back to that big uh, gate that they were talking about. <laughs> so. And well, that, that pretty much concludes my update, but I'm happy to answer any other questions that the board has. Great. Um, Go ahead. Thank you. Here. What, what projects are, are being projected out there for the deep water channel? I mean, Sort of so the that. elements that are part of the federal project are Deepwater Ship Channel East Levy, which is essentially behind the Bridgeway Lakes development. Mm -hmm. um, and it calls for um, some slope stability and some slurry wall, and I don't think there's any levy raise in there. Um, then there's the Deepwater Ship Channel West Levy, which um, was constructed when the Deepwater Ship Channel was, was built, and that extends almost 20 miles. And it calls for some levee height adjustments, um, a lot of rock on the western facing slope, um, as well as some slurry wall along portions of it. Um, so that's specifically the Deepwater Ship Channel. There's one small um, segment on the Port South levee, right where Lake Washington butts up against the, the levee there. There's a slurry wall called for about 1,000 feet. 1,500 feet, something like that, of slurry wall there. Um, but between those three reaches, that's what's proposed relative to the Deepwater Ship Channel. I, I'm a layman, so I don't understand. Larry, do we ever use any of our own um, composite, like mud from the port or anything? Or what is it that we use? So to, slurry, to slurry is a semi-solid sort of concretey mix, um, and essentially a, a, a trench is dug and then the slurry is poured in it's not meant to be a solid wall to keep anything from water from migrating uh, through it but it's meant to slow it down significantly permeable yeah so it's semi permeable it's meant to slow it down significantly so it doesn't take material with it yeah. have you ever used like I'm asking composite, but that makes some sense to use that. Well, the the there are specific specifications that the core mm -hmm. and the state has for slurry makeup. Okay. Um, I don't believe there's any composite. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, Greg, thank you very much. Um, on to item four B, director's comments. Do we need to approve the consent? Pardon me? Approve the consent agenda. Uh, we, yeah, we did do that, we didn't did. we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we approved the consent. I, I oh my gosh, I'm so sorry I did. Yeah. Okay. I apologize. We had a right. late night last I'm night. I'm so guys. sorry. 12 o'clock <laughs> city council I'm meeting. scrolling through the agenda and I'm like, where are we at? Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, item 4B, director's comments. Are there any? Yeah. Um, I just have one. Uh, I know that one of our staff members, uh, Paul Dirksen, is going on the cap to cap trip uh, this next week, and I believe uh, most of the council is going as well. Yeah. And uh, that's been an uh, important part of our outreach over the years, with SAFCA's outreach over the years. So, uh, um, you know, whether you're on the flood protection team or not, let's keep the word out that, you know, we're still, still working on this project. and. Um, you know, expect a full report when they get back. Yeah, and if you don't mind, uh, Chair Ramos, uh, if, if you have Paul's contact information, I would strongly recommend reaching out to him, um, especially if you plan to attend any of the um, meetings related to flood, um, and that way you guys can, can coordinate and he can share any information that he has with you. I will mention I've read the issue papers um, and flood protection. Our WESAC projects are um, very prominently highlighted. So Paul um, did an incredible job on the team um, making sure that our issues were elevated and we'll okay. go into the meeting. So thank you, Paul. I'm not on that team. Community development line. But... Okay. 
Uh, with that, we'll move to item 4C, which is adjournment. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay, go home and take a nap, guys. Yeah. Uh, no, I have to go to work. I wish. Jeez.